Get the cream, precious metals or the crypto things Your bars are light like the one that's on a Smith machine But my Mac's swell and I ain't speaking about the pretty Welcome to 3 Count Commentaries Today we're going to be discussing the Sasha Banks, Naomi walkout So uh, uh, about 8 or 9 o'clock um, PW Insider dropped the story I'm going to read it to you That Sasha Banks and Naomi decided to no-show Monday Night Raw so here's how here's how it goes. Um, it says Raw main event changed after talents walk out of the taping. The main event for tonight's Monday Night Raw broadcast changed at the last minute to Becky Lynch versus Oscar after two talents walked out late in the day before Raw went on the air in Norfolk, Virginia. The word making the rounds backstage at the taping is that Sasha Banks took issue with some of the planned creative for the original main event, a Raw six pack challenge to determine Bianca Belair's next challenger at Hell in a Cell. Banks had a meeting with Vince McMahon and the belief among those we've heard from is that when McMahon didn't choose to change direction on the plans, Banks wouldn't back down on her issues and made the decision to leave the taping. Naomi, her WWE Women's Tag Team Championship partner, left with Banks, even though she was also booked in the main event match. WWE quickly shot several new segments with Adam Pearce and Becky Lynch to instead set up Asuka vs. Lynch as the new main event. This is a developing story, so there may be additional updates. Now, near the end of Raw, as a matter of fact, right before the main event started, which was about 2, 10, 45 or something like that, uh, WWE released a, another statement um, through uh, the various wrestling websites. It says, quote, When Sasha Banks and Naomi arrived at the arena this afternoon, they were informed of their participation in the main event of tonight's Monday Night Raw. During the broadcast, they walked into WWE head of talent relations John Laurinaitis' office with their suitcases in hand, placed their tag team championships belts on his desk, and walked out. They claimed they weren't respected enough as tag team champions, and even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. Monday Night Raw, the scripted live TV show, whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret we were unable to deliver as advertised tonight's main event. Now, according to the dirt sheets, this is unprecedented. This kind of stuff never happens. In fact, it that's the opposite. Every time somebody walks out on WWE, for the most part, WWE mentions it on TV. They mentioned it when the Ultimate Warrior no showed a bunch of house shows that led to him getting fired in 1996. It was mentioned on television. I believe it was by, mentioned by Gorilla Monsoon, if I remember correctly. Um, it was mentioned when Stone Cold Steve Austin walked out. I think they mentioned CM Punk walking out. Uh, they mentioned these things because they want fans to know, of course, that your favorite wrestler will not be there. Now, Norfolk, Virginia was uh, officially sold out and all these other wonderful things. So I guess I'm, I'm required to break down and to talk about this. So first, we're going to talk about the walkout in and of itself. Um, for what we've seen, the main event was changed from a six-pack challenge to uh, Becky Lynch versus Oscar, which means Nikki Cross and Dewdrop both lost main event matches. Because of Sasha Banks and Naomi. So they screwed their co-workers. Sure, they could have replaced them. Uh, they could have made it a fatal four-way match. They could have done any number of things. But the bottom line is the company thought that Asuka versus Becky Lynch would be a bigger marquee match. Considering if you can't get Sasha Banks, we'll just give you Becky Lynch versus Asuka in a bigger mar marquee match. And to be quite honest, it's the right decision. You know, Becky Lynch versus Oscar is a pay-per-view quality match. And if we're going to get it in the main event of Raw, it was right to do it that way. So they screwed Nikki Cross and Dewdrop. They screwed their uh, co-workers. Uh, they distracted from the show. That's the second thing. Because once this information started going out there, people kind of stopped talking about the show as much. And really just started talking about Sasha Banks and Naomi. People get pretty much split into their camps where they were talking about either uh, why what they did was wrong or why what they did was right. And it was blind support on both sides. We'll get into the peanut gallery probably a little bit later. But in any way it goes, they just they distract it from the show. And this is a uh, this is it's not exactly a cardinal sin, but it's not exactly something good for the product. It's also not good for the talent. If you were not watching the show. Um, 
you probably well if you if you weren't on Twitter or on social media, you probably wouldn't have known and you might have watched the show and everything would have came across great except for the fact that WWE kept talking about it on TV. But um, since most of their fans and they know this are on social media in some way, they would have seen the six pack challenge be advertised and they can't say, oh, well, it's false advertising. Now they could have also to go back to, to part one, they could have shot around it. They could have shot an angle that required Sasha Banks and Naomi to be taken out of the match. It could have got jumped backstage. It could have, you know, you know, did something and wrote them out of the match and then, you know, doing something else. They could have done anything. But they're not required also to appease people. And, you know, that's just a thing. Number three, and this is the most important thing, especially to Vince, is that they abandoned the fan base. Um, fans uh, expected to see Sasha Banks and Naomi once they were advertised. If they were not advertised, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. But since they were advertised, people are looking for you. Now, this is why, you know, Vince, one of his things is, you can say whatever you want, you can do whatever you want, but you can't screw over the audience. Uh, Ultimate Warrior was fired in 1996 for no showing shows in which he was promoted. Steve Austin, when he walked out, Vince McMahon did that whole public thing where he said that Vince McMahon owes the, the crowd and the WWF an apology for walking out. Um, the whole thing with CM Punk, we already know that. There's going to be something similar here, no doubt. And this is why they're talking about it so much, because they don't feel like they've done anything wrong. If they felt like they did anything wrong, they probably would be quiet about it. But because they don't feel like they did anything wrong, the company's going to talk about it. They're going to put it out there. And yes, I'm making this video before Naomi or Sasha Banks can make a comment, so we're probably going to have to have some type of update in the future, as one of them is probably going to talk about it later on. And the big one, the big issue here is that this is a recurring theme with Sasha Banks. It's at least once a year, she throws a tantrum and leaves. She throws a tantrum and quits, or she tries to quit, or she tries to, I'm going to stand up for myself and, you know, argue with creative and need to go home and, you know, do something else or, and because it's a, a recurring theme, my last point is of what to do. What do you do about this? If this had been just the second time she did it, I still would probably say the same thing. If it was the first time, I would probably say, okay, let her go cool it off. But it's been three years of this shit. You know, like no matter how big of a star you think Sasha Banks is, Vince has fired people who are bigger stars than Sasha Banks. I'm sorry. You know, he fired the ultimate warrior. You know, he was a bigger star than Sasha Banks. You know, it, he has fired bigger stars than Sasha Banks. He has fired bigger stars than Sasha Banks. Firing Sasha Banks, which won't happen, by the way. I don't believe for a second that he will actually fire Sasha Banks. I'm saying he probably should. Or if it were me, because I'm an asshole, I would fire Naomi and then make Sasha Banks work out the rest of her contract. I would fire Naomi for being a follower and I would make Sasha Banks work out the rest of her contract. And then I would let it be known. Hey, Naomi is not that important. We had a Naomi on the roster forever, not doing anything with her. Sasha Banks was in the main event of WrestleMania. She's a marketable star. We're going to utilize that. We're not going to diminish the star that we built. We're going to continue to make money off this thing. Even if, even if she doesn't do anything, but come out there and do jobs. She's going to finish out this contract. And then she's going to go over to AEW or do whatever she wants to do. But you, you have to set a standard. If beyond, if what does it say that Sasha Banks gets to continuously throw tantrums and then get whatever she wants? What, what does that say? What does that tell to the rest of the, uh, to the, to the, to the locker room? You know, like everybody was gets, gets really tight assed about Charlotte, right? When Charlotte does something and people are tired of Charlotte and they say, like, what the fuck is going on with Charlotte? They have a right to do so. You know, when people are getting pissy and it's continuously with them being moody and over the top. Yes, people have a right to say, what the fuck is going on here? When people get tired of Charlotte's bullshit and they say, why the fuck are we catering to Charlotte? That's kind of how I feel about Sasha Banks right now. Like, why the fuck are we continuously catering to Sasha Banks? Why? She's not even that important on the totem pole right now. And I'm not saying Sasha Banks isn't a big star. I'm just saying she's not that big of a star. She's not the fucking rock. She's not Undertaker. You know, Vince would never fire Undertaker. He probably could have walked out a hundred times and he didn't do it. And that is another problem that I have. Sasha Banks has only really been at the top of the industry about four or five years. 
sure she was she was pushed really heavily in like 2015 2016 and but she came a sort of a mainstream star in like 2017 you know coming on up you know now she's doing tv shows and all that kind of stuff she is a big enough star that she is kind of mainstream kind of she hasn't been a big star that long and apparently it's gone to her head and the reason why Sasha Banks is getting the most heat is because this is a normal Sasha Banks thing. She gets an attitude. She throws a fit. She storms off. You know, she be, she starts being a brat and she storms off. Now, if it was 25 years ago, 30 years ago, no doubt in my mind, Sasha Banks probably would have been fired before she even put the keys in the ignition. But because it's a different WWE today, I'm pretty sure What's going to end up happening is they're going to talk about it probably tomorrow morning on Tuesday morning and say, okay, whatever it was, it wasn't that big of a deal. Sasha Banks go home for a little while or, and we'll talk about it in a week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever. And they'll they'll talk it out and she'll be able to come back to pull this shit all over again next year. Personally, I think Sasha Banks is a phenomenal performer. I think she has a lot of charisma. I think she has, she's a good wrestler. I think Naomi has a lot of charisma. But why deal with this headache? Why deal with it? You know, like to me, that's just a question. Why deal with it? You know, Roman doesn't give you this problem. Bianca doesn't give you this problem. Becky doesn't give you this problem. Charlotte, eh, kind of. But most of your top stars, most of the people you pay tons of money to, you don't deal with this shit. Why deal with it from her? What the fuck? She's you know, like, what is this about? Sasha Banks that we have to put up with this. And I'm saying all this stuff before I even do my thorough investigation into the comment that WWE made. Because I, I still plan to go back to that comment and look at it because we need to know what, what's going on. At this point, I'm just talking about the walkout. Just the act of walking out is crazy. Name a job. You can just walk out and keep it. And wrestlers do this shit like it's no big deal. You know, like, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. You don't just get to walk out on your job because you don't like what you got to do. You know, I dig it. I dig hating it. I understand hating it. I've hated jobs. I've hated stuff that I had to do. But it's one day. You know, it's one day. It was one match. It, It doesn't matter if the plan was for them to be stacked on top of each other and pinned. It's one fucking match that nobody would have remembered in two or three fucking weeks. Nobody would have cared. It would not have been a big deal, regardless of whatever you was going to be asked to do. Unless it was going to be you doing some absolute porno shit in the middle of the ring. It wasn't that big of a deal that you needed to walk out and go home. Guaranteed. All right. Guaranteed. It was not that important. So my thing is. If Vince McMahon really still got his balls, she would be fired. Both of them would be fired, especially Naomi. Because I sit here and I'm struggling to even think of a reason to keep Naomi around. Outside of maybe you piss off the Usos, why else do you need her? Like, they came into the office and put the belts down and said, we're not respected as a tag team champions. Okay, I can get how, you know, that would be problematic for you. But... We can deal with that tomorrow. Right now, I need you to go do this. You know, we could talk about that tomorrow morning. We could talk about how we can fix that situation tomorrow morning. Tonight, we need you to do this. And for Naomi to come in there and and give attitude. I'm like, what? How long was she on the roster doing nothing? Sitting and catering. Doing nothing. Getting paid. And finally, she starts getting pushed and she does some shit like this. Hell no, nah. Naomi would have been fired before the show was over. If I was running the show, she'd have been fired before the show was over. Like, oh, you know you fired, right? Now, the other one, at least she's a draw. At least I can sell action figures and Funko Pops and all that kind of shit at Sasha Banks. You? What the fuck do I need you for? I didn't juice all the money I could possibly get out of the Naomi character. And I guarantee you AEW is not going to be beating down the door for you. I'd fire her. Period. And I tell Jimmy, like, look, you know, we're saving your ass from all these fucking DUIs. 
So we got you got to make you got to make up your mind, baby. You want to get an attitude too? Just remember your fucking mugshot is on the fucking uh, Twitter machine four hundred fucking times. You ain't got no realms and no roads to cross. Your wife is fired, B. It's over. Dealing with that whole shit. Why stress yourself out? This man is 76 years old. Why should he be in here arguing with these people? There really is no benefit to him to argue with these motherfuckers, man. He should just fire them. Straight up. Fire the fuck out of them. Unless. Unless. They did something fucked up. WWE did something fucked up, which is entirely possible. It's entirely possible they asked them to do something that's completely, totally stupid, which nine times out of ten it was. But it was not stupid enough that they can walk out and then that was it. Did they ask them to go in the ring and have a twerk contest and have a white t-shirt, a wet t-shirt contest or something like that? No? Okay, well then, they had to wrestle a wrestling match and then what, lose? Okay, so what? You've lost a hundred fucking matches. What difference does it make if you lose this one tonight? So, no. I, I don't, there's, I would have to literally hear something that would change my mind. Because I can't think of anything that would be outside of something incredibly sexual or something incredibly humiliating, which would be what? You were stripped naked in the middle of the ring? Like, I don't know. That's still kind of sexual. What would it be? I've seen all kind of people toss out all these crazy ideas about, oh, Naomi was going to pin Sasha or Sasha was going to, you know, or whatever. And I'm just kind of like, even if that was the case, so what? <laughs> you know, so what? Most of this stuff, we could talk it out. That kind of shit, if Naomi was supposed to win, which is what I heard, which is probably not true. But let's say Naomi was supposed to pin, uh, pin Sasha Banks to win the match. Okay. So what? You can write that in a situation that it would make perfect sense in order for that to happen. Then they can say, okay, well, it's every woman for herself. Not going to take it personally. And then maybe you build on it later, you know, or whatever the case may be. But you don't walk out. Now, looking at the WWE press release, it says, quote, they claim they weren't respected enough as tag team champions. I, I can agree with this. I think that the tag team division of the women's the tag team division has been absolutely abysmal, but so has been most of the women's tag team divisions on, in history. And so has the women's division on both brands have been absolutely, well, raw has been pretty good, but the SmackDown women's division is absolutely trash. It's trash. So that's not a reason to come in and just, you know, start, Acting up. It's not a good enough reason. The second one is, is um, they claim they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents. Well, that should have been the red flag right there. They were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents. Well, that would have had to have been Dude Drop and Nikki, right? It wouldn't have been Oscar and it wouldn't have been Becky. So that would have to be Dude Drop and Nikki. What was it about Dude Drop and Nikki that was a problem? I believe they've had matches with them before, which is what the press release says, even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. Now, when you look at the show, there were two individuals who were not on the show, which were Nikki Cross and Dewdrop. Now, you had six people in the match, two of them walked out. The other two just magically vanished into the mist. So that means... That the issues was with Dewdrop and Nikki Cross. Now, what did Dewdrop and Nikki Cross do? Was Dewdrop a little too heavy handed? Maybe she was too rough. Was Nikki too rough? What's going on here? That should have been the thing we can investigate. And maybe this is the key to them not being fired. Maybe it is a situation where, you know, maybe they got hurt in a match with them. Maybe it was, you know, some comments that were made, you know, um, and they didn't like that. It's entirely possible that you know, people could have got into an argument, got into a fight, and they just decided, you know, we don't want to work with them anymore. And they say, well, you got to. And they say, well, we don't want to. Well, you got to. We don't want to. And then I'm walking out, you know? Entirely possible. Still, you don't do it at that point in time. You're Sasha Banks. You got a little bit of stroke. You have them replaced. You say, look, I don't want to work with them. Take them out. 
Swap them out with somebody else. Put Sonya Deville in there. Put Carmella in there. I don't care what else you got to do. But I'm not working with them. You know, swap them out. And if Vince says, well, I'm going to swap them out, like, why not? You know, who's more important? Is it more important that I'm on the show? I'm Sasha Banks. Is it more important that I'm on the show or Dewdrop? Is it more important that I'm on the show or Nikki Cross? I want to be on the show. I don't want to work with either one of them. Take them motherfuckers off the show. Vince probably would have like, okay, whatever. Unless they went in there kicking and screaming. And then Vince just felt like he needed to boss up on him and say, fuck, I ain't doing nothing you say. Because you came in here yelling and shit or acting up or whatever. I doubt they came in their suit and tie perfectly, you know, rational. They, it says that they came in and put their belts down and basically says that, you know, we aren't respected enough. We're going to get out of here. Ah, what? What? That's crazy. That's crazy talk. You're talking crazy, crazy talk. But this, there's a, a hundred ways where this thing could have been avoided. If cooler heads would have been allowed to prevail, but of course this is a Monday and Raws are chaotic already. They had several hours to get this thing together, which means they also had several hours to replace Dewdrop and Nikki if that was the problem. They had several hours to come up with a storyline in which Sasha Banks and Naomi could have gotten attacked by any two other wrestlers. And that was their next storyline opponents. They could have done any number of things. There were plenty of female wrestlers who were not even being used on the show. That we could have, you could have called up two women from NXT just on the fly saying, hey, I know we need two chicks. Any two chicks will do, you know, and we could have done that. There's any number of things they could have done in order to get this thing hashed out in a way where people didn't storm off. But it seems to me like everybody in the situation was just being a knucklehead. And since Vince can't fire himself. He should get rid of the knuckleheads. Get rid of the motherfuckers who are getting on your nerves, man. Just make it easy on yourself. Sasha Banks does this shit every year. She's been doing this shit every year since like 2018. Like, enough, man. Like, everybody loves Sasha Banks. Everybody's a big fan. They know she's a star. She has you know appeal. She has charisma. But again, she's not she's not too big to be fired. You know, she's not too big to be released. And I think that it's a terrible shame if, you know, this was going to be the case, that that would be the end for it. But I don't think WWE has the nerve to fire Sasha Banks. I don't think they have the balls. I don't think they would. I don't think they would. Um, It would be nice if they did, though. You know, just to prove a point. I think it would be great. I mean, from the from the walkouts and the tantrums and the vaccine shit, it's just constantly stuff with Sasha. Everybody recognizes her talent, man. Everybody, it's not even an issue about whether she's got talent or not. But the fact of the matter is, talent only gets you so far. You also got to have the right attitude. The reason Sasha Banks doesn't get the Charlotte push is she doesn't have the Charlotte composure. Charlotte does crack sometimes, like the whole Becky Lynch thing, where, you know, she she doesn't like Becky, so that's kind of like a sore spot with her. But she doesn't take the shit so personal that she affects business to that degree. You know, and you you almost never see this from like really top guy like John Cena. Man, can you imagine how many times John Cena probably could have walked out on dumb shit he was asked to do? Or Roman Reigns being asked to do dumb shit and deciding to walk out? He got covered in fucking dog food. We just had this conversation, man. We just had this conversation with, with Tony Storm. Oh, she got hit in the face with a pie. She should quit. Like, oh, Roman Reigns got covered in fucking dog food. Vince himself pissed on live TV. What the fuck did he ask you to do that was so upsetting that you had to walk out? I don't get it. I'll never, I probably won't get it until I actually hear their side of the story. And I'm open to hearing Naomi and Sasha Banks' side of the story and saying, well, you know what? That was kind of stupid. Maybe they should have walked out. Or maybe Dewdrop and Nikki Cross said something they didn't like. Maybe it was something racist. Maybe it was something, you know, just plain ignorant. And they said, you know what? I don't want to work with them. They have a right to say they don't want to work with them. Okay, that's fine. You know, maybe there's something that they could say that will soften this this conversation going forward. But right now, as I sit right after Raw airs, knowing what I know right now, I don't see any reason why we keep Sasha Banks and Naomi on the roster. What for? To do what exactly? To do this shit again? Because this is Sasha Banks' third time doing this kind of shit. 
You know, I don't. I just don't get it. All right, so let's get into the uh, let's get into the peanut gallery. There's going to be some people who are going to be defensive on both sides. I think it's pretty controversial. Um, let's see. Some of y'all forgot Sasha Banks and Naomi was the shit and kept saying it's quote unprofessional to walk out on WWE. It's downright disrespectful to treat two of your biggest female star stars ever the way they have. And to have them make their tag title useless by starting a feud. We don't even know what they were asked to do. That's the thing about this whole conversation. What were they asked to do? We don't know yet. So people are making an assumption. And I have no idea why you would make that assumption. Uh, Say black women behave. Oh, so it's got to be about race now. When Vince fired the ultimate warrior for no showing events. When... You know, Austin was sent home and was, you know, fucked over, a, a punk, you know, CM Punk. It's happened to white guys plenty of times. It happened to a black woman once and somebody says all of a sudden it's a race thing. It's, to me, this race shit has just become a shield. You, you're not allowed to criticize anybody because, well, her black skin is somehow, well, her black skin and her vagina are somehow shields that protect her from criticism. It's like, no, no, not at all, actually. Uh, there's somebody, the way y'all keep twisting it like she's a spoiled brat, but maybe y'all should look at how this company is treating these talented women and wonder why it's happened more than once. I'm sick of y'all calling what it is. Sasha Banks and Naomi did the right thing. You don't even know what they did. And you don't even know why. This is a problem. It says, uh, somebody says, why is Sasha Banks the most dramatic woman in all of WWE? It's just, she's passionate. That's what it is. She's one of them types and she's so passionate about it and she takes everything too seriously. You know, if she probably should give less of a fuck, you know, maybe she wouldn't be as good if she gave less of a fuck, but she probably should care less about this kind of thing. You know, she's entirely too. And it's like all these women who are featured on the show and are featured less in less positions than Sasha Banks. How do you feel right now? You know, if you're like a Liv Morgan or some somebody like that, somebody who's been waiting on a spot to open up, and Sasha Banks keeps getting fuck, keeps fucking up, and keeps getting more opportunities. Eventually, you got to be like some some of these guys who they see Randy Orton, they're like, oh, what the fuck? You know how many times Randy Orton can fuck up and keep getting shots, keep getting chances? You know, like that's kind of be that's, you. You got to get to that point with Sasha Banks at some point, right? Uh, let's see. Um, so Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out of Monday Night Raw. It's not a work. And then a six person tag match was changed to a one on one with Becky and Oscar. Why were do dropping Nikki cut from the match? Well, that's become that's the that's the question. Because if Sasha Banks and Naomi had a problem with two of the performers in the match, probably wasn't the two performers that were in the ring tonight because Sasha Banks has worked with Oscar extensively and Becky Lynch. And I believe Naomi hadn't had any problems working with Oscar or Becky Lynch either. So the problem had to be Nikki and Dewdrop. And so Nikki and Dewdrop were probably just left off the show. So I'm interested in how deep this thing goes. So let's see. Only time would tell, to be honest, they should release and let's see how she does. Her fan base is loyal, though. I'll give them that. Her action just cost Nikki and do drop the main event. Nobody would talk about that, though. I bet. Why? Because it's Sasha Banks. Um, uh, let's see. It says insider baseball from someone who clearly knows nothing, just like me. Let's see. What else is this? Um, it says, wow, I'm disappointed in both Sasha Banks and Naomi. You're both effing professional wrestlers. Bloody act like it instead of crybabies. WWE should block dock you both pay. Hmm. That would be interesting. Well, they are in violate in a uh, breach of contract by refusing to perform. They are in breach of contract. Um, they could fire them. Um, let's see. Not going to lie. I think Sasha Banks would be great for the AEW's women's division. Not just as a talent, but as someone who can help run and manage the division. She'll definitely be vocal enough to get to get them featured. That's what you think. Look, there's a ton of money waiting for her on AEW, but they don't feature women. They don't. Now, they may actually feature her because she's so well known. And maybe that's going to be her leverage. I mean, are you really going to fire me and send me over to the competition? I'll probably be like, yeah, because I don't think they can monetize you the right way. So, sure, go ahead and change your hair purple or blue or whatever and go on over there. Let's give it a shot. 
I mean, they sent Moxley over there, Punk's over there, Danielson's over there, Sting's over there, Foley's over there. Not Foley. <laughs> I mean, Henry's over there, Christian's over there. I mean, there's a ton of people already over there. You know, Andrade wanted, wanted out so he can go over there. You know, Keith Lee was over there. There's a ton of people over there. Now, to be quite honest, Sasha Banks probably would be the bigger star to jump ship if she were to get, get fired and get sent over there. But the question would be, one, is Tony Khan willing to spend the money to get her? B, is he willing to spend the time to build that division around her? That's Those are the questions I would think to, to ask. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, somebody is trying to do a thread on Naomi and Sasha Banks running as tag team champions. Um, I don't know. The fact that they were tag team champions at all was is is pretty interesting to me, considering I didn't know they were that close. Um, somebody says I love Sasha Banks, but this girl walks out on WWE when she's in a mood or doesn't get her way. Girl, bye. Yeah, that happens quite a bit, doesn't it? All right, so this here's a supporter. Um. I stand with Sasha Banks. What she did tonight took guts, and I couldn't be more proud. She took a stand against BS Creative. We don't even know what she was asked to do. Again, a lot of people are just taking sides based off of we don't know what she was asked to do. Again, I'm willing to hear that she was asked to do something that I wouldn't do, and then I kind of be like, you know what? Maybe I would have walked out too under that, you know, in that situation. But I can't imagine she was asked to do something that was so embarrassing that she decided to walk out. Uh, let's see. Sasha Banks, we love you. I'm sure you do. The best women's wrestling is in WWE and Impact on the side of the women's division as well. Oh, well, thanks. I'm pretty sure they appreciate that. Uh, says Sasha Banks and Naomi have major sucking up to do to the boss or go to AEW? Well, I'm pretty sure they won't have to suck up that much. Vince is a big old softy these days. I don't see him firing her. Sasha Banks is a cancer in the WWE. This is the second time she's walked out of the WWE because she didn't get her way. She's the T.O. Terrell Owens of the Women's Wrestling Hall of Fame talent. What? I don't understand this. Is this English? She's the T.O. of Wrestling Hall of Fame talent tier one jackass. Uh, I guess that's Terrell Owens. I see Johnny Ace's statement about Naomi and Sasha Banks is pretty obviously stretching the truth as far as Jerry McDevitt is going to let him. This behavior is in WWE's DNA, and it's one of the reasons I fully gave up on it and switched to AEW. We don't know what they did yet. You know, and if they come out and make a statement, which they might, they might not. They might you know, be professional, quote unquote, and uh, keep it to themselves and deal with it behind closed doors or whatever. But WWE does have to tell the audience why they won't be there. Um, let's see. Somebody posting pictures of Naomi liking AEW or following AEW. Uh, these people. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like how people make those kinds of assumptions. Oh, she followed AEW. That means that means something. I don't know. She could have followed AEW 11 months ago, dog. I don't... Whatever. Um, let's see. Oh, that's in Spanish. I can't read that. Say, Naomi and Sasha Banks, please stay strong. Both of you are phenomenal talents. Whatever and over is going on, hopefully it can be fixed. Uh, somebody says, I don't blame them for leaving. Uh, you're right. Sasha did the right thing. I'm with you. JD from New York. Um, uh, okay. Let's see. Well, he says, not sure who to credit here, whether it's SRS or wrestling Inc. This is the official statement of WWE. I call absolute bullshit on the unsafe portion of this. They were legit in the ring with Dewdrop dropping Nikki Ash last week. Weren't they? They were. So that's why I'm asking the question. What was really going on? You know? So, but again, it doesn't matter what's going on, really, unless they were asked to do something that was completely and totally offensive. You don't walk out, you know, you do, you do your thing begrudgingly, but you do it, you know, it's one match, you know, you can get through tonight. It was all of 15 minutes, you know, all of 15 minutes. You didn't even have to do a good job of it. You could have just sh shat the bed, which is what Charlotte would do. She was sandbag and bullshit through it. And then it'd be over and everybody be none the wiser. And she could have went back there and complained about it. And now it's on the New York post for fuck's sake. Are you serious? Uh, see, Sasha Banks is really the Nicki Minaj of wrestling. She sis don't take shit from nobody. Well, hopefully she got enough money to, to last a lifetime. Cause, uh, 
She's very young too, so she made a lot of money pretty early. So maybe she'll be doing all right. Um, every time Sasha Banks has disagreed with the creative direction, history has proven her correct. Mm, I'm not so sure about that. We'll see. Uh, the WWE is really not in a position to allow themselves to lose not only Naomi, someone they constantly drop the ball on, but arguably one of their biggest stars and one of their few mainstream personalities, Sasha Banks. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure they'll be okay. You know, oddly enough, when they they fired again, they fired the Ultimate Warrior at a time when they really needed star power and really wasn't making any money, and Steve Austin walked out in two thousands. You know, I mean, it is what it is. These companies are prepared for times like this. You know, not saying that she could just be easily replaced. I don't believe that. But I do believe that um, the company is not going to say that any one person is bigger than the company. And how odd that I stumbled right into this segment here. WWE needs Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks doesn't need WWE. Okay, well, then she should have just quit. (laughs) You know, like, just quit. Stop taking the money. Stop taking the contracts. You know, like they was around for 60 fucking years before she came around. How the hell? Oh, whatever. Uh, see, Sasha Banks and Naomi are amazing, beautiful talents, but no one is above taking care of business the right way. If you got a problem with something, okay, cool. Handle that shit after the show. Don't walk out on your partners and fans that paid to see y'all asses. S- finally, somebody said that. Somebody says, it's like when Steve Austin took his ball and went home, but with women. But then again, that's twice that Sasha Banks does this. So... I, I don't know. Could be something else. Um, there's, I never pegged the woman that tweets how much she loves Miss Man every other week, Sasha Banks, to be the woman that walks out. But hey, wrestling has its surprises. I think that she does. I think she's being real facetious with that. Is that um, she kind of knows that she aggravates people by being bratty and being uh, over the top like this. And then she gets her way and then she's, you know, thank you, Vince McMahon. And that's kind of a taunt to the people who want something to happen to her. And it wasn't until this point that I was kind of like, I'm sick of Sasha Banks. Like, I already knew Sasha Banks was a diva and she's very over the top and, you know, whatever. But I never, like, legitimately wanted Sasha Banks gone until tonight. Then I was just kind of like, bro, like, what are we, again, what are we keeping her around for? To sell Funko Pops and shit, man? Action figures, I get that that kind of stuff is important, but can't we make Funko Pops and action figures of other people that we can push on this fucking show? I mean, if she wants to go to Hollywood, let her go, please. You know, she'll she'll do okay, I promise. She's an adult. She'll be all right. There's other wrestling companies. They can, you know, try to monetize that as much as possible, throw her face all over everything, and then we'll see how it goes in six months, you know? <laughs> And I'm just saying, um, Sasha Banks and Naomi, the past few weeks of WWE TV has been weird. You can feel a disrespect for the women's tag champs. Not sure why pop pop Vince McMahon doesn't appreciate you guys. He doesn't appreciate Oscar either. I'm glad you guys stood up to him. Um, the thing is, I'm thinking the issue is with John Laurinaitis, maybe because if she says she, if they came in and they went straight to John Laurinaitis, then the issue might be John Laurinaitis or it might be Bruce. You know, and maybe Vince didn't want to clean up that shit and just say, guys, just go do whatever they tell you to do. And then Sasha was like, no, because we know that Vince ain't sitting around writing the fucking show himself. You know, it's just it's ridiculous to think that. But he probably did just, you know, give the thumbs up to the show and think, OK, this is a good idea that they had here. You know, what's the problem? And then you come in there confronting and not conversing. And this kind of shit happens. Somebody says, love Sasha Banks and Naomi, and I would love them to stay in WWE, but there are a lot of places that need help with their women's division. That is true. Um, that is true. It says, Sasha Banks and Naomi deserve the respect they put on the women's division. That's the tweet. Okay. It says, what is happening, Sasha Banks and Naomi? Keep y'all heads up. We love y'all. Fuck the haters. Uh, let's see. Y'all believe rumors on here about Sasha Banks all the time. It's no wonder I'm seeing, oh, Sasha has a habit of this, which were proven wrong every single time. But y'all hold on to that hope like it's true. Um, whatever. Um, Brian Zane, a professional fulfills their ob- contractual obligations, but more importantly, a professional knows their worth. Um, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's one fucking show. Get through the fucking show. Get the match in the ring. That's it. All this, you know, you need to know your worth. What the fuck? 
You gonna stand on your ground on a fucking May 6th, 7th, May 16th episode of Raw? That means nothing? That in a month won't lead to shit? This is the, this is the, the hill you're gonna die on? You're a fucking idiot. This show didn't mean anything. The titles weren't on the line. They weren't gonna lose anything. They were gonna lose a match and then what? Then what? Win a match on SmackDown or something like that. Just, this was not that big of a deal. These people are really trying to turn Sasha Banks into fucking Martin Luther King or something around here. She's like she's some Harriet Tubman type figure. She was asked, probably asked to lose a wrestling match. Just think about that in the grand scheme of things. Unless, unless I'm completely and totally wrong, which I could be. And this thing is deeper than rap. At most, she was asked to lose a wrestling match. And her job is to be a wrestler. That's it. Uh, let's see. Sasha Banks is in the weird tier where you're all just a cog in the machine. Modern WWE has so few people that are numbers movers, even sporadically, that they treat them all like stars. Brock, Becky, Roman, except for Sasha. That's because Sasha has a history of walking the fuck out. Like she has a, she's damaging her own character and credibility, which in turn is her damaging her own le- leverage. That's something that, you know, if she was smart, she'd know that. That the more time she walk out and pulls this card, which is why she should only pull it, you know, in really serious situations. That the more you damage and walk out, the more WWE gets to turn those fans against you. And then once enough people have turned against you, you're not worth anything anymore. They did that with the Ultimate Warrior, you know, and it was dirty. You know, it was really dirty, but they destroyed the Ultimate Warrior's brand. And in doing so... They left it so the only way for him really to monetize his brand was to come back to them. You know, he couldn't go to WCW. They went out and went public to how the Ultimate Warrior was no showing events and, and all this kind of stuff. Then they did the, de- the self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior because he wouldn't come back and all that kind of shit. That was damaging the intellectual property of the Ultimate Warrior to limit his ability to monetize it. It's a dirty, dirty track and tactic. That way, if Sasha Banks really wanted to maintain her leverage over WWE, what she would should do is say, you know, put it, create like a checkbook. You remember this May 16th episode of Raw? I didn't want to do this shit, and I did it anyway. You know, I came in here and told you I didn't want to do this, and I, you, I did it anyway. All right. Now, this is a bigger deal, and I absolutely need this from you. Because, you know, we know she kicked and screamed to get the main event of WrestleMania, and she got it. And then people were kind of like, oh, what's, oh, how can that be? How can she get the main event? She doesn't deserve it. Like, you know why? You know why? You know? (laughs) Come on. (laughs) You know why? Stop being an idiot. Let's see. Let's be honest. WWE has been screwing over legit talent for some time. If your main undisputed champion is the only main attraction, that's a problem. WCW in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think Cody Rhodes has proven to be a pretty good. Um, attraction thus far thus far we'll see in the long term so if y'all be saying anything y'all want Sasha Banks to seem like so, this evil bitch so bad nobody knows what actually happened quit making accusations I agree with this um, we know she went home though you know we know she went home and that's a problem that's a problem Says I watch WWE for Sasha Banks and, and Roman Reigns I tolerate everyone else if they mess this up, then it would definitely suck and there would be no point in watching. I forgot to mention this, and since nobody else is going to talk about it, I wonder what Fox would think about that. Because I think Fox actually wants Naomi and Sasha Banks. Um, which is why she wasn't moved to Raw. And instead, when Ronda was, came in, she just kind of moved down a notch. But I told y'all this, right? I told y'all this. Uh, I am Mongrel Damas. I told you, when Ronda Rousey shows up, Sasha Banks loses a spot and ultimately she, she loses her mind every fucking time. I don't know when I said this. When did I say, I said this at least two or three weeks ago. I said every time I think, I think it was after she lost a singles match. Who did she lose to somebody? She should have never, I think it was Shayna Baszler or something like that. Somebody she had no business losing to in any event. I said it then when Ronda Rousey shows up, the Sasha Banks thing just starts lighting up. And I, I'm thinking that's the real problem here is that she started to say, well, I can't go in there and complain about Rhonda. I'm going to go in there and complain about Dewdrop. 
Whatever. We'll see. We'll see eventually. Uh, so see, who's Sasha Banks to demand anything? She's not a primetime player like Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey is the only WWE in the in the world don't know Sasha Banks anything. She don't like it. She can go work for AEW. That I wrote it. I read it how he wrote it. I swear. Who's Sasha Banks to demand anything? She's not a primetime player. Ronda Rousey is a WWE in the world. Don't know Sasha Banks anything. She don't like. She can go work for AEW. It was gibberish. Yeah. It says, enough with all this crybaby crap from Sasha Banks. Just fire her already. She throws a lot a hissy fit whenever she's not getting her way. Um, I'm very interested in what some of the other um, women's um, are, are thinking. It says, if I was Sasha Banks doing press tours with the tag belts alone, or if I was Naomi having dealt with poor booking since her grand return in 2020 Roy Rumble, I'd be upset too. We don't know the full story, but both women are valid to feel frustrated with their treatment, depending on what they were being asked to do. Like, what were they asked to do tonight? We don't know yet. Um, maybe we'll let them, we'll, we'll see. Um, let's see. I think a lot of people just like, you know, it's a lot of fed bad shit, which is, which is cool, but whatever. Somebody says, can't wait for the Sasha Banks tell all interview coming to you, tube and TV networks that are not affiliated with WWE. Okay. Uh, here's an interesting thing. It says, as if Sasha Banks needed WWE to continue being the fucking star that she is. If people like Bianca Belair, where they are, it is because Sasha Banks knows how to lose and knows how to benefit others at her expense. Yeah, but, you know, uh, Becky Lynch also did a pretty good job of putting over, and so did Bailey before she got hurt. You know, Bianca Belair is a, it's a long-term project that people put a lot of effort into. You know, but like I said, Sasha Banks is really doing a lot of damage to her own brand. You know, the, the brand of Sasha Banks, the name of Sasha Banks, it has to be correlated with something. The reason why WWE stops doing business with people is because not because they did something horrible, believe it or not, because they continue doing business with Jimmy Snooker, even though, you know, I am, I, I'm on full train that Jimmy Snooker is innocent until proven guilty. But we know that you continue doing business with Jimmy Snooker. Because the intellectual property of Jimmy Snuka is more important than Nancy Argentino. And that's scumbag behavior, but it's business. You know, so it is what it is. Um, Snowden. Oh, Jonathan Snowden. I haven't called anyone about Sasha Banks and Naomi and have no insider information on this. I can tell you one thing. When I worked in the press, I literally got thousands of press statements from WWE covering all types of comics. Topics. None of them read like the one I saw online tonight. I'm sure, because I've never seen anything like that either. Uh, normally, they would have, well, they did do the whole Austin in the ring thing, but he was gone for a week before that happened. Sasha Banks, oh, and if you get punished for your tag partner posting a dumb, stupid pic of a dog tag tagging damn near every diva in it, I understand why you're so upset. And that's why I go lone wolf. A lot of, in video games, baby, can't only trust yourself when you go status like us, baby. Or Bibby. B B Y. Bibby. Jesus. The guy's fucking delusional. We got no time for that, sir. So like, I have no idea what to make of this Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out on this tonight's story on Raw. A work? A shoot? Did Johnny Ace do something shitty as you do to make him walk? Probably. I don't know what's going on, but I do know that they got people talking about Raw. So good job. No, because it's a distraction from Raw. It's a different subject. It's a completely distraction from Raw. Um, so this is very, very strange. Um, somebody says, don't get me wrong. Sasha Banks is a pretty good female wrestler, but this is a dumb business move. Well, what happens to those tag titles now? Well, I guess they continue being what WWE said that they were. Look, if anybody wants to start throwing belts around, I think Ricochet should pitch that motherfucking Intercontinental title <laughs> to, to a window. He should just say, fuck you. And just, like, well, you gotta be carrying this big chunk of metal for it. Get this thing the fuck off me. I gotta walk through airplanes with this. You must have just keep this motherfucker. It don't mean anything. Sorry, WWE, but I'm not buying the Sasha Banks and Naomi slander. Anyone watching this product has seen the atrocious way almost the entire women's division has been booked since the return of John Laurinaitis to the team. It is painfully obvious to anyone watching. Um, I'm not thrilled with Johnny, Johnny Ace either. Um, without knowing him doing something specific that I think is a problem, I don't, I'm not willing to say fire him, 
But I'm not thrilled with Johnny Ace. I don't think he does a great job or anything like that. You won't see me caper for Johnny Ace. I don't know that, you know, he just seems like a, a pretty bland corporate stooge. You know, like what the fuck is the big deal about John Laurinaitis? Anyway, uh, Sasha Banks needs to go get them Hollywood checks anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. So this whole situation between Sasha Banks and Naomi with WWE is better than any show currently on Netflix. And seriously, and I'll sit in a seriously note, this situation is very odd, and I hope we all find the nature of it because there's always two sides to a quarter. That's true. Somebody says, who cares who are they say they can't show up to work or not work when it's supposed to, they don't like it, they can quit and leave WWE. Does not revolve around Sasha Banks and Naomi because they think the world owes them something because he come to work typical female. I don't understand that. What is that? What language is that? Hopefully your language, somebody keeps saying it is a work. Of course, you got the Sasha Banks and Naomi are all elite tweets. Uh, if, if Sasha Banks gets released, she shouldn't even waste Russell anymore. Just go get that Hollywood money. It's more secure. Mm, that's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. But I think WWE will still see some value in Sasha Banks. There's a lot of, if she was to be gone for like a month or so, let's say, there's big money in her return. So, you know, you can change not being worth anything right now to being worth a lot in three months because you sat out for three months. It won't help Naomi at all, but, you know, uh, Sasha Banks, yeah, maybe. I uh, says, and before WWE releases the self-destruction of Sasha Banks home <laughs> documentary on Peacock. <laughs> it's long overdue, baby. It's long overdue. Uh, She's going to Wendy Richter herself. Uh, somebody says, WWE needs Sasha Banks. Y'all think boring-ass Ronda can carry y'all's primetime show? <laughs> Y'all want Ronda to go on over Sasha? <laughs> Ronda is the human embodiment, the personification of what an unenthusiastic hand job feels like. Y'all need Sasha. The laughs are in the tweet, for starters. Secondly, Ronda is the human embodiment. The personification of what an unenthusiastic hand job feels like. That's brutal. That's that's pretty brutal, man. It says that unprofessional narrative that WWE throws at Sasha Banks and Naomi is so fucked up. Why the hell are y'all doing that to them? Uh I'm sorry, is walking out on your job professional? No. That means it's unprofessional? Yes. Therefore they say it's unprofessional. And we don't know if they were fed that line. Well, Corey Graves. You could probably say that, you know, what are they going to do? Bleep it out? For what? You know, it's not like he said anything that wasn't entirely true. They walked out after being advertised on the show. They fucked the audience. Um, here somebody says, Sasha Banks still can't stop copying CM Punk. First Punk's catchphrase. Now, today, he stood up against Vince and walked out just like Punk did. Um, so I just... Walked out on one show in my career. Dick Strangler asked me to lose a battle royal and end the streak. I told him yes. Got paid half up front. And then I took my $70 to a Texas roadhouse. Sasha Banks and Naomi fought for themselves. This legend respects the fuck out of them. Who the fuck is this guy? Cody Wyatt. Battle royal king. Never heard of you. King of, king of battle royals. My ass. Uh, Sasha Banks is the female version of CM Punk. This wouldn't surprise if she would really did this. I would really be interested in to be, you know, just to have an aside, if we want to fan fiction this thing a little bit, I would be very interested in what Sasha Banks would do and say unscripted though. I would be very interested in that because she's been in this system for so long. I would be very interested in what she would say on her own without it being the Sasha Banks character. But she also put a lot of time and effort into that character, too. So, you know, and she wouldn't be able to use much of it if she was, you know, to leave. You know, what what could they do? The legit leader, Sasha, <laughs> the legit leader, <laughs> Mercedes Veronato, Mercedes XV, <laughs> the legit leader. <laughs> <It ain't. laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Now all of these um, saying that these issues go back several months. I don't know, man. This is pretty. It's pretty ridiculous. Without knowing what's going on, it's hard to tell. But 
I'm on a tip like you walked out on your gig, you walked out on the fans. I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's see. WWE can't afford to lose talent like Sasha Banks. Even Vince McMahon should know that. Unfortunately, with some of his decisions, it makes me wonder if he does understand that. Somebody didn't respond. It. That's why Sasha Banks knows she can throw her weight around like this. She knows that she's right. She's also right to be upset about the dumb booking that absolutely shit on their tag team titles. Um, I don't know. Again, wondering about this whole thing. That's what I want to know. What is the details? What's the deets? Um, Sasha Banks has always been unapologetically Sasha Banks. That's very interesting. Uh, Sasha Banks has always been consistently unreliable and has been booked that way, but everyone on here yelling that she is misused. I think people are overlooking how unreliable Sasha Banks has been. From the various different hiatuses that she went on to the whole vaccine thing when she refused to get vaccinated and then she wasn't participating for a while. That ended up screwing the SummerSlam match, by the way. It ended up working out okay for Becky and Bianca because they got to work at WrestleMania, but ultimately that match was, was, was fucked because of Sasha Banks' behavior. You know, like she's cost the company a lot of money. You know, you have to think about that. This is a business. This ain't, you know, Sasha Banks did one bad thing and everybody's tripping out. There, again, there could always be a good reason why she walked out. And a pretty good reason. I could think of quite a few of them. But I just don't think they're very likely. A lot of them revolve around sex or violence. Like they wanted her to brand something on her forehead or something like that. I wouldn't do no shit like that either. If you asked me to sacrifice a goat on live TV, I probably wouldn't do it. But I doubt she's going to be asked to do anything like that. I doubt she's going to be asked to, you know, have sex with Bruce Pritchard in the middle of the ring. I would accept that she walked out if that's what she was asked to do. I don't see that being the case. I see at least she was probably asked to lose a match or to begin building a feud with Naomi, which a lot of people seem to think is going to be the case. Even if that was the case, get through the match and patch it up later, whatever the case may be, whatever. Um, this Sasha Banks and Naomi stuff is absolutely wild. I have no idea what to think. I was live in the arena tonight, and even though the main event was good, it lacked two of the best women's talents today. Hopefully this is a work. All right, this is an interesting one. Wow. So Sasha Banks and Naomi have left. Well, I got to read it how it was written. Wow. Surprise face. So hashtag Sasha Banks and hashtag Naomi. Hashtag left. Hashtag WWE Raw surprise faced. Honestly, I'm not surprised the way fucking hashtag management hashtag treat them like hashtag garbage, garbage emoji. I would fucking left a long time ago. Crying emoji. Man, if this keeps up, there's not going to be any hashtag roster left. Uh, frustrated face. All thanks to that old fart hashtag Vince McMahon. Hashtag WWE. So many hashtags and gay pride flags. Man, what the fuck? Ugh. That shit was barely literate. Um, oh, no, it's, a, it's that guy again. Y'all know what if hashtag the Miz doesn't hashtag Russell, then fucking hashtag release him. We don't give a shit about his hashtag movies and nobody cares about his little bitch hashtag theory. And as for hashtag Vince McMahon, buddy, you're just fucking running the company. You're a joke and have no business intelligence whatsoever. Hashtag WWE. I'm sure that's the case. I'm sure he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know a damn thing about running a business. Because me, guy who doesn't know how to properly run a Twitter account, can't properly tweet. They know everything. It says Sasha Banks and WWE make beautiful music together. But maybe it's just not meant to be. Props to Naomi for holding Sasha down, by the way. Young Miami would do with JT. If Naomi and Sasha wind up in AEW, they'd be closer to Hall and Nash than Punk and Brian ever were. This is from uh, Big Nasty Alfred Kanawa. Uh, it'll last for a little while, but that's it. It says, I doubt any Sasha Banks and Naomi feels unsafe, quote unquote, with the other women involved in the match. I'm pretty sure they were just standing up for what they believe in and actually wants WWE to take women's wrestling serious again and actually invest in the women's tag division. Well, if that's going to be the case, if your issue is going to be that the tag championships are not special, then I guess the Usos just also start throwing their tag team titles through the window. And RK Bro, considering Riddle loses all the fucking time, he well, he didn't lose tonight, but he loses all the fucking time. They should throw theirs through the windows too. Everybody should just start throwing belts through the windows of Titan Tower. Everybody except Roman Reigns, because he's the only one who gets treated like anything matters, you know? 
It should just rain fucking belts. Uh, Ilya Dragunov should just launch his fucking belt from Russia across the ocean into the windows of Titan Tower. For fuck's sake, just fucking guys <laughs> over at NXT UK, you know, they go start pitching heritage cups from fucking Europe or some shit. Like, this thing doesn't mean anything. You know, like, fuck it, why not? Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, it says, I have no problem with Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out. At least they didn't during a match. Y'all disrespect them women way too much, and all they do is put on good matches while putting other people over. Uh, they, all they do is their job, I guess. Um, so that shit is crazy. If, if Sasha put over Charlotte, Becky, Bianca, Liv, Bailey, Oscar, and Nia's ass, who she didn't like, why the hell wouldn't she put over Naomi, who left with her? Are y'all dumb? Make it make sense. Sasha Banks, keep y'all foot on their next fave. Some gay dude, of course. Uh, you know, some guy with finger, long fingernails. It's weirdos. I don't watch WWE, so I'm no kind of fan of Sasha or Naomi. That's just no judgment on them. I just refuse to watch, but even I know that Sasha Banks is a major ratings draw. She should have say over her booking. She's a bigger star than the women they're pushing and use like shit. I do believe that she's a bigger star. She should get a bigger hand in what she's doing. That being said, though, nobody's bigger than the machine. The Rock has to come and go. Austin has to come and go. Everybody's got to do their part, man. Everybody, look, and your part is just not that important right now. You know, who's to say in six months? But your part is not that important right now. Just do your fucking part, man, and, and call it a day. So we're going to keep doing this. Oh, my God. Look at this thing here. Jesus. So. Period. People supposed to believe that at Sasha Banks WWE and at Naomi WWE walked out and gave their titles. Yeah, okay. I mean, wish it were, wish it would be true. Naomi needs to take her DUI, DWI, loser husband with her. It's probably fake anyway, but let's hope it's true. Ratings will go up. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, Everybody's talking about the walkout. Not that many people are talking about Raw. And see, this is the negative thing that comes out of this whole thing. Is more people are talking about this than actually talking about Raw. Um, and you can't really benefit from this if you're Sasha Banks or Naomi because it's the name Sasha Banks and Naomi and not your real names. You know? So, you know, if you, if you wanted to say, look, we're trending on Twitter, yada, yada, yada. It's like, yeah, but it's WWE property trending on Twitter. To Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out situation, there is something we don't know about that that's deeper. None of us know shit. Just know they left the area. That's absolutely true. And WWE put out that statement, which is kind of suspicious, but it's also something that they do, you know, because it's up to the fans to know that they may not be at any live events that they, that they are also advertised to be on. Maybe they just skip this Raw and they show up at a live show like nothing happened. And Vince is just kind of like, yeah, we'll see him at TV on Friday or whatever. Um, we don't, we don't know. We'll see. Uh, so Sasha Banks and Naomi are the reason I regained interest in WWE. So I'm very nervous for what's about to happen with their futures as professional wrestlers. That's very, um, <laughs> I'm always suspicious of people who say, oh, I just started watching wrestling because of person here. Um, so it says TK is looking to dest destroy the bloodline when he hires Naomi in 90 days. Jimmy will want to join his wife and possibly want to join a faction. And Sasha Banks will be TK's game changing ch game changer at all out. <laughs> yeah, this time she might actually be a game changer though, because people actually do care about um, Sasha Banks. Um, let's see, May 9th. Sasha Banks and Naomi face Dewdrop and Nikki Ash on WWE Raw and defeat the budding tag team in under five minutes. Why is this relevant? WWE statement claims that champs had issues with working with participants in the original six-pack challenge main event for Raw. Yes, that is the, that's the situation that I'm sitting here. I knew they had wrestled them recently. I didn't know it was just last week. Um, Maybe they got hurt in the match. Maybe something happened in the match. Maybe something happened after the match. We don't know. And it could just be bullshit. We don't know that either. So we shall, we shall see. We shall see. But this scene feels like something that's going to blow over. The more I talk about it, the more I look at it, the more it feels like this thing is just going to blow over. And then in two or three weeks, it won't be that big of a deal anymore. You know, that's just kind of how it feels. It feels like, you know, it's, it's a big deal right now, but that it won't 
last forever because Vince, again, is a businessman. He's not emotional and hot tempered like I am. Um, I'll probably, like I said, I would have fired both of them before the key was in the ignition. They wouldn't even get out of the parking lot before I'm like, you know, you walk out of this building, you're done, right? <laughs> you know, I gotta fuck the money up. <laughs> Whole cloth. I gotta fuck the money up in a major way. But that's just me, man. I, I just don't have, like, I don't have gray. I'm 38 and I don't have gray hair for a reason. I just don't deal with this shit. I don't argue with, with fuck motherfuckers like this, you know? I don't. <laughs> you know, I just, you, you cut them, cut, cut, cut your losses, man. There's no point in, you know, arguing and debating shit. People don't don't have to do what they don't want to do. You don't want to do it? Fine. I don't want to fucking pay you. You know, now we could talk about it tomorrow morning, but either you're going to do this shit right now or you're going to agree to not do it. You're not going to agree to not get paid and we talk about it tomorrow or you're going to go home and I'm not going to see your ass again one way or the other. You know, but I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about it. There's no point in arguing about it. So it says, Sasha Banks and Naomi, if you are looking for a good creative, AEW is waiting for you. Heart. You could lead that division and put it on the map. We respect you here. Who is this guy? Um, oh, he's some YouTube channel guy. It says, Vince needs to fire both Naomi and Sasha Banks immediately. This was the biggest disrespect you could do to the WWE fans and your co-workers who rely on you. If they can't be reliable, they need to be blackballed from wrestling. Give the tag titles to Liv Morgan and Alexa Bliss. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that one, bruh. I'm not so sure about that one. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody is doing a entire list here. I guess I should go through this because why not? I'm running out of material anyway. So let's see here. You are approached in February as being put in a tag team after both being promised big feuds at WrestleMania. How do you know they were promised big feuds at WrestleMania? You bite the bullet and put everything you got into a tag team. It works. You get over, win the titles, and WrestleMania become merch pushers. Is that what happened? I don't know if they sell a lot of merchandise. I know Sasha Banks does. Did this tag team? The tag team don't even have a name. Like, they called it Boss and Glow, but they don't wear matching gear or anything like that. I don't know. And I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of don't want to continue this because it's kind of this feels bullshit to me. But let's let's continue. Five weeks into your reign, you show up to TV and ready to work. You are told you will be in the main event, and you are happy. You both are then told that one of you will be going over from pinning the other. You have questions why that decision was made and how it helps y'all. I don't know that that's the case. Is that the case? Where did that come from? Where did the idea that Naomi was pinning Sasha or Sasha was pinning Naomi, where did that come from? Uh, if you know, let me know in the comment section. Your request a meeting with your boss to discuss it. Your boss takes the meeting and everything is going well. He understands your concerns. The meeting ends well and the match is told to be reconstructed. For some reason, producers get mad about it. How do we know that happened? That's what I want to know. How do we know that part happened? That Vince was like, hey, you know, Sasha was right. Changed the idea. And then all the producers was like, whoa, Vince, but you said. And then Vince was like, you know what, pal? You're right, pal. He's just like blowing in the breeze. He's just, he's not Vince McMahon at all. Warlord of all wrestling. He's completely a, a, a leaf. He just goes with every direction the last person talked to him said. You know, hey, I was talking to this producer and he said this. But then I talked to the talent and they said this. And then I talked to this guy and he said this. That's, you know, the janitor is going to be like, hey, how about Drew Gulak being world champion? He's like, he's like, hey, that's right, pal. I love that idea. It's not Vince. He's not going to waffle that much. <laughs> you know, like somebody might make a solid argument, but it pretty much once he made a decision, you know, you better make a good argument in order to get him to change his position. So he says you... <laughs> He then asks, with one of your members going over, what happens to your titles? You are told basically they would just be carrying the belts. They want to use you both to get women's champions more over. Bianca versus Naomi, Sasha versus Ronda. That was actually don't sound too bad. You know, singles matches. It's a it's one program. You know, get you some main event money, some nice little singles money, nice little singles clout. Why not? Especially if you're a Naomi, why wouldn't you go for that? Neither one of you will win the solo titles and you won't defend your tag titles until Money in the Bank. <laughs> I probably should stop here because this guy is fan fiction and the shit out of this. I can guarantee you them fucking tag team titles will not going to be defending that Money in the Bank. I guarantee it. I don't know when the last time them fucking belts appeared at a pay-per-view. Was it uh, WrestleMania when they won them? I think. <laughs> They'd be lucky to be on the kickoff show. 
All right. You ask for another meeting with your boss, but this time you are being called spoiled. A producer walks away screaming. You come back and tell both of you to fix your attitudes. How do we know any of this stuff happened? Y'all have a brief meeting amongst yourself and decide to stand up for yourself. You go to, to another boss and make it clear you have concerns. You ask why you're even in the match if you, and why aren't the other women in it. You ask why your titles have no stories for two months. Again, you're met with fix your attitudes. So after one meeting with yourselves and asking others, you make the ultimate decision as a team. It's said how one side is trying to create a fucked up narrative. Also, it was asked why were Nikki Ash and Dewdrop in the match instead of starting their own program tonight. Naomi nor Sasha talked down about being in the ring with either one. I don't know how that got flipped. Good question. I just don't know who this guy is. Who is this guy? Um, he's just a fan. So he doesn't have any insider information. He just fan fictioned up. He just uh what's that? He just Dumbledore some shit out of nowhere, like and you know, this is what he came up with. What kind of horse shit is this? His guy just pulled a fucking Merlin. He just started writing some shit with his magic wand and all of a sudden I'm like, what the fuck? He got like three hundred likes. That's why I stopped to look at it. I'm kind of like, this motherfucker is collecting likes everywhere. <laughs> like gold coins. Like, ooh. And like, what, what the fuck? How did he know this? How did he know this? How is this true? This, no, nothing matters. Nothing matters. Um, but it's not a black woman thing. They did this to everyone who walks out on the company. That's one of Vince's unforgivable sins. This is one thing. You can do a lot of stuff in WWE and Vince will forgive it, but walking out on the audience is not, it's not going to work, man. That's not going to work. Um, uh, Vince is not going to like that too much. People power can suck my powerly powerful dick. Leave Sasha Banks and Naomi alone. Ugh. Ugh. Um, I read this guy's whole thread. It was shit. Sasha Banks deserves way more. Literally, the high that Becky and Charlotte is on, Sasha should be on there too. It's very unfair. WWE Raw, same for Naomi. See, I think Sasha Banks would be there, but you're talking about Sasha Banks, who burns all of her, her credit by doing shit like this. It's like, yes, Charlotte is a headache, but Charlotte is there every single week. She cuts those monotonous, boring promos that that WWE probably doesn't. She does. She works with people she doesn't want to work with because she knows that she can get her way when she really puts her foot down on something. Becky Lynch doesn't have a history of throwing tantrums, actually. You know, so she pretty much goes with the flow, and they just kind of let Becky say whatever she wants to say on in these interviews or whatever, and they don't really, you know, bust her balls for it too much, but. Every couple of months, Sasha Banks is coming in with that credit and that she's like, I'm about to throw a tantrum and I'm about to burn some of my credit. You know, and just, she goes in there and just starts acting up, you know, whatever the case may be. She's just going in there and she's going to cut up one time and then she's going to be on her best behavior for a little while. And then she's going to be like, you know what? I think I've curried up enough, enough points. You know, it's like a limit break in her Final Fantasy. She like she gets a certain point. She starts to glow. And then she's like, well, it's time for my limit break attack. I'm about to find a reason to act a fucking fool. And that's going to be it. And we just going, we about to go with it. You know, it's that time again, Vince. You know it. She'd probably be sending them text messages right now. Like, you know, it's that time again. You know? <laughs> it's that time again, man. Uh, so apparently Naomi and Sasha Banks blamed Dewdrop and Nikki Ash for part of the why they dipped and called them unsafe. When they are historically the safest women's wrestlers in WWE, this has been corroborated. Is there a backstage beef here we don't know about? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't hate either one of them, though. Some people got this idea. I think firing them is mostly just about proving a point. Not about not liking them, but it's about, you know, just you can't have Sasha Banks constantly throwing a fucking fit. Eventually, her own co-workers are going to turn on her again, eventually. Because this is kind of how things start, right? She starts being bitchy and complaining and whining. And all the fans are like, she's just standing up for herself. And in 10 years, there's going to be people like, man, all that bullshit Sasha Banks was doing was completely and totally uncalled for. It was that, It was the same thing with uh, CM Punk. Like, uh, a couple of years after CM Punk did all his, I was just standing up for myself and the boys. Guys like Rod Van Dam would come out and be like, what the fuck was CM Punk doing? 
You know, like he was on some bullshit the whole time. <laughs> like, there's no doubt there's going to be somebody, probably Becky, who's going to be like in 10 years. Sasha Banks was full of shit. And, you know, everybody was on her side because, you know, she's Sasha Banks, but she was full of shit the whole time. You know, somebody from the locker room, some hardcore Holly tier motherfucker is going to be like, man, Sasha Banks, come on. She was full of shit. And, and she knew she was Vince's girl. So, you know, she was able to get away with a lot of this stuff. It won't come out for like 10 or 15 years how much of a brat Sasha Banks really was. But, you know, right now it keeps seeping out because she keeps making these big, dumbass, idiot moves. So it says, I stand with Sasha Banks and Naomi. The, this writing and superior authority at WWE has to end now. Or I change the channel. The writing sucks. The WWE sucks. And when you sign a WWE contract, you become their slave. Do as I tell you attitude. Yes, because I pay you money. That that alone means you're not a slave. But it means you agree to do a job in exchange for pay. Now, we can negotiate the job. Sure, there are certain things I can't ask you to do. Certain things that I think will be unreasonable to ask you to do. But if it's something that is reasonable within your job, you should probably do it. And if you're pissed off at me afterwards... Come talk to me afterwards, but do the job, you know, do the best that you can. You know, um, Sean, Sean, notoriously unprofessional, goes in there and ruins the match. Charlotte goes in there and ruins the match. They're not going to damage themselves. They'll damage the match, though. And people will just be like, oh, this match sucked. And they're like, yeah, because Charlotte decided to go in there and sandbag. Oh, boy, this one's a doozy. Uncomfortable with their opponents. Isn't Sasha the one who recklessly ended Paige's career? Oh, ooh, do do the don't. That's very true. Uh, see, so it's totally unprofessional and perhaps a bit delusional. They should be fined heavily if not released. At the same time, though, if you're keeping them and using them forward, not turning this into a storyline would be a huge mistake. I think they finally see that this probably is a lot of money that they're going to be leaving on the table, you know. Um, that would be that would be nice, um, but I think we've had enough of this, right? All right, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys for your time. Um, I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace out.